Hi, thank you for tuning in. On this episode, we're going to be discussing cybersecurity and the Internet of Things. Everything you need to know about connected devices, about the future of cybersecurity, and all the things. Stay tuned. Heck, Tamim. Okay, guys. Um, it's my pleasure today to receive one of my friends, uh, Ayman and uh, Roland from Red Alert Apps. Roland? Being the founder and CEO of this adventure, maybe you would like to say a few words yeah. about your company. Uh, thanks, uh, Kofi, for for having us. Uh, really, it's a, it's a pleasure actually to to have this discussion. We uh, we've been friends for a long time, and uh, the three of us, by the way, uh, yeah. back in Paris. Uh, and so it's uh, it's really a pleasure to to have you back, uh, even even online. Uh, yeah. So uh, let let me say a few words about. Um, uh, Red Alert Labs. Uh, it's a it's a French uh, based company. Today, we are specialized in um, cybersecurity applied on uh, the Internet of Things (IoT). Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and actually, our mission is really to bring trust to this Internet of Things. Okay, I'll, before I go into the uh, what what does it mean really, uh, I would like probably the audience. Maybe not everybody actually are uh, uh, you know have have the same uh, knowledge of about about uh, what is cybersecurity and what is Internet of Things. Uh, it would be good probably to to give them a, an idea about what we're talking about. Uh, so basically, cybersecurity is it is um, the process of protection of how do you protect actually your valuable assets or, or, or data uh, against actually uh, you know cyber attacks and uh, malicious hackers um, uh, on the on the net basically so uh, and IOT is uh, more like you have to think about it like uh, the new internet it's mm -hmm. like a uh, you know, if you imagine that how we transition from the connected PCs to connected smartphones, now we're connecting more uh, machines, uh, smart, more or less smart. More uh, recently, the, the the cars, basically, more recently, every our cars are connected. Sometimes you can uh, you can have uh, connections uh, in the cars. I think that's what the audience is the most familiar with. Everybody has a small. Uh, kind of a computer on board in their car where it's connected to the internet, they can Google, Google Maps, et cetera, et cetera. And then it's also connected to the, to the, to the actual data of the car that transmits to the, uh, to the manufacturer of the car and those kind of things. Am I accurate? Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. And yeah. actually it's really surrounding us everywhere. It's like really from our homes, offices, uh, uh, even, even uh, you know, our bodies, right? So yeah. there are yeah. some pacemakers they are connected um, and yeah everything that is smart smart TV smart fridge uh, even your toaster is smart yeah. Yeah. today and connected. yeah even the toaster uh, yeah, so yeah, it's funny thing. So, uh, uh, so we are really in in this uh, uh, new technology area, and and um, and indeed our mission is to uh, um, bring trust to that uh, to that ecosystem, uh, in the sense where uh, you know those uh, manufacturers of of those connected devices or products, let's say, uh, uh, would like to provide trust to the buyers to the yeah. users. And the same way around, uh, right? The users and uh, would like to as well trust your, these connected mm. devices in terms of how much they are secure yeah. and how much they are, yeah, you know, they are not actually going to uh, 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 compromise their uh, privacy or or anything. Okay, so uh, so a regular a regular manufacturer, for example, of uh, of let's say uh, house uh, equipment, let's say a fridge or let's say a uh, a TV or let's say a, a monitor, monitor, basically their challenge today is to make people trust that even though it's connected to the internet, it's not going to hack into your privacy. It's not going to turn off the lights uh, by itself. It's not going uh, to, that, that, that's, that's the challenge that everyone is facing. Basically, we're, 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 we want to secure the, connect, the connection between the things we use every day uh, so that it's safe to use, right? That's the. Absolutely. This is not the only. By the way, this is not the only problem that you could have when you have connected mm. because also they are connected to a specific network. So you can sometimes uh, do what we call today relay attack on other things that are connected to the same. Oh, okay. Network. So let's say, for instance, you have a fridge, a connected fridge today. If you succeed attacking this fridge that is on your internal network in the apartment. So sometimes attackers could also exploit these vulnerabilities in this bridge I to see. attack your personal devices. I see, I see, I see. So it's like a, 
a process that could be uh, extended I see. to the uh, security of the whole network. I see, I see. I mean, I'm glad you jumped in. How, how do you think COVID-19 is affecting all of this? Because now, I, I mean, if, if you were using 50% of your time, your connected uh, items, now you're using them maybe 90% of the time because you're more exposed to them. If you have a smart TV, now you're using it more. If you have a smart fridge, now you're using it more. So, <laughs> so how is COVID-19 affecting all of this? Okay, well, actually, as you may know, uh, uh, the COVID problem uh, will impact businesses according to several criteria. So, um, first of all, you know, whether if your business model is B2C or B2B, you're not going to have the same impact. Okay. Uh, at Red Earth Lab, you have the B2B model. So, uh, something that is 100% sure that uh, our client, the regular client, uh, we're going to have impact on our regular clients. We're going to have impact on uh, how to maintain our activity in a different mode of working. Mm -hmm. So today, okay. uh, once you have the crisis, uh, of course, all the team or most of the team is now working remotely and you should adapt. Mm -hmm. So yeah. also, uh, the impact will depend on uh, how the company was prepared before the crisis itself. Do you have a crisis management plan or not? So at Red Arrow Cloud, at one of the heart of our uh, mission is to also manage uh, crisis. Uh, from a reaction point of view, it doesn't have this impact on our activity because we were ready to take the right decision at the right time and to implement the right plan according to the situation itself. But what was the most difficult is of course, to avoid this unemployment phase mm -hmm. of the employees mm -hmm. and to maintain the activity itself <clears throat> in order actually uh, to keep the activity running and to adapt according to the crisis itself with the ongoing project, for example, with some of our clients. And of course, we had one of the most uh, challenges, uh, one of the most important challenges in this type of crisis is also to maintain the moral of the employee of up even in the period of the crisis. So, of course, we had a lot of changes that occurred in our day-to-day -day, uh, activity, and uh, especially on the projects that were ongoing with some of the clients, you need to adapt, you have a timeline, you need to adapt, you need to execute. And uh, let's say, for instance, if you have planned a face-to-face -face training, well, the adaptation was, uh, was one of our clients, is to maintain this type of training, but remotely, and then, and by finding an innovation mm. in how to deal with that part mm. uh, accordingly. Uh, and of course, as you may know, each company has today a roadmap, a timeline, and a strategy. And when it comes to crisis, uh, you need to adapt your strategy, you need to adapt your plan, okay. and you need to give priorities to something that maybe it wasn't your priority at first, but in order to keep uh, the mid term goals and the long-term goals. Absolutely. So that's globally how it impacts us today. Absolutely. Okay. And so the in, in terms of things that you're implementing for your company, uh, is there anything you can, from, from the things that, without diving into the details, but from the things that worked with you and for the things that didn't work, is there something you can share with the community to say, okay, we tried this and it worked, so maybe you want to try that, or maybe this didn't work and maybe you should avoid doing that? Are there some lessons that you already have that you can share? Yeah, of course. The first thing is uh, uh, to say, no, I have a fixed business plan. I have an action plan. I need to go with it. And I don't want to change the timeline because I have business goals related to that. Mm. Actually, the first mistake to avoid is to not adapt to the environment okay. of the crisis itself. Okay. So one thing to do is to adapt your business plan and your roadmap according to the crisis uh, with a vision on the midterm and the long term. Okay. Uh, of course, also during the crisis, you need to create some processes that were not here before the crisis itself. Yeah. You need to create an environment that will allow actually to, to facilitate somehow the interaction between the team in order to maintain the activity actually according to the situation itself. And also what you need to prepare because we have a starting point for the crisis and an ongoing and an end point of the crisis. 
Mm. Okay, so, of course, some of the activities uh, today uh, will be slowed down. But what you need to do is actually to try thinking about your reboost plan after this crisis and uh, how to deal with that later. So I you should not stop working because you think that you don't have direct activities with the client, for example. You mm. should anticipate how to rebuild this trust with more clients later to do a reboost plan that will allow you actually to gain more clients and also you're gonna have different type of clients after the the crisis that maybe uh, you didn't uh, work with before and you need to adapt also to their to their need and of course um, we need to continue to implement our platform. Yeah, uh, yeah. With our class because yeah. actually we have a platform that is used to uh, automate some security services related right. to the Internet of Things. All right. So uh, this is something uh, that will also help uh, our clients later mm -hmm. in, uh, when it comes to this kind of crisis, actually, because they will be able to execute some cybersecurity services through this platform in an automated way and without actually uh, having the necessary expertise themselves to do it because the platform will govern these expertise and will automate all that. Also I see, that. I see. Let's dive into the, the, the situation that we're in a little bit more. Uh, now that we've covered a little bit your business, we've covered what are the things that you're doing for your specific business. Let's dive into uh, IOT, the Internet of Things, and uh, COVID-19 has is, is arguably maybe the most violent accelerator, let's put it this way. So it just, whatever we already knew that's going to happen in 20 years, it's going to happen maybe in 20 months, right? And so it's been like an accelerator. So maybe Roland, you want to touch on how you see IOT evolving in the next near future, let's say 12 to 24 months? Yeah, sure. So it's it's a it's a really interesting uh, interesting question, Tufik. Uh, so it's uh, uh, IoT have been, as I told you, seen so far as the future of the internet. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's something that is um, uh, touching on every uh, uh, market vertical uh, yeah. industry, uh, and and it's actually bringing a lot of benefits. To these different industries, right? So we're talking about uh, 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 right now in the uh, manufacturing, uh, smart manufacturing, uh, like uh, things that would uh, uh, do some predictive maintenance of, uh, of 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 devices that are uh, on 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 the platforms that uh, you know forty kilometers yeah. accessible by humans um, to actually your daily uh, smart usage of uh, of benefits that could get from. Uh, those uh, those um, smart devices that will help you uh, mm -hmm. gain time and 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 uh, and efficiency, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, I, the 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 technology is there, and actually, uh, it's getting uh, more and more uh, uh, um, accessible. Okay, okay. Uh, and the, the re one of the reasons actually we'll see that and expect to have like 75 billions of connected yeah. devices deployed in 2025. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so we are really we are really actually uh, looking to this time from 25 to I mean 20 to 25 to to 30 uh, right. as well. Uh, and, and, and we expected that every single human will be like surrounded by around seven to ten devices that are absolutely connected, absolutely right? we already have them we already have yeah. them we already have most yeah. of them absolutely so so indeed it's uh it's going to the growth there uh it's impacting good like our 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 business our projections since mm. actually cybersecurity is is let's say one of the most uh, uh let's say the first barrier to yeah. adoption right yeah. Uh, yeah. in some specific areas such as like uh, the medical uh, sector or the connected cars, as you just yeah. mentioned, where, yeah. where safety as well is is, is a big issue, right? Mm. We're not talking privacy or, or or confidentiality of data here. We're talking the human safety, yeah. and it's uh, and therefore this is uh, this is uh, this is as well going to uh, evolve cybersecurity uh, 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 with with as well like uh, uh, artificial intelligence uh, uh, the techniques and uh, uh, that will. 
uh, also be on both sides on the protection as well of. I see, but on the <laughs> yes, I see, I see. Uh, well, we that, that's that's a people. that's an argument I've been hearing a lot. Uh, one of the one of the people I've been recently speaking to is specialized in uh, human safety and is specialized in securing buildings and in securing uh, uh, physical security, right? And he was and he was saying basically that for the for the for the future uh the attacks are not going to be just uh, uh somebody taking an automatic rifle and just shooting 20 people it's going to be maybe somebody hacking into the red light system uh of a city uh in the uh, of a big city and then jamming up the the red lights and then cars will be colliding to each other or for example somebody's going to hack into the oxygen system in a hospital or somebody's going to hack into a uh, uh, into your living room to cause maybe a fire in your house or something like this. So that's uh, unfortunately these are happening. Uh, these are the, the the things that would be happening in an Armageddon world, and maybe. And the scary thing is like you have to think like uh, like a bit the pandemic right now. Yes. What, what's happening is exactly what could happen in such type of attacks because. Um, they uh, we call them scalable attacks. Okay, we don't have the word pandemic in. Yeah, yeah but scalable attacks. Yeah, exactly. If it's they can do it for one hospital, they can do it for twenty thousand hospitals. If they exactly. can do it for one company, it's going to spread very quickly. Mm. Okay, uh, and, and and actually it will be affecting uh, the whole infrastructure. And mm. indeed, when infrastructure deals as well with. Uh, the, the the users and the human in a way or another and in fact the humans then everybody is impacted as well so okay. uh, yeah so I mean maybe you want to touch on the cybersecurity problems that uh, okay Ronald just spoke a little bit about businesses and about like as a general safety as a general but I think I think we don't see many people talking about the individual I mean when I hear cybersecurity for the individual I heard just turn off your Facebook notifications and uh, don't allow to access your photos. But that's not it. There's much more to worry about in terms of cybersecurity for the individual. So can you, can you touch on some of the things we're gonna face as cybersecurity problems as a humanity at some point? Uh, are you talking about after the crisis itself or globally? No, globally, global, globally, globally. So globally, we, we will have a lot of problems. I don't know if you can call them problems. Mm. We will have a lot of challenges to deal with actually in cybersecurity. So they won't be a problem if you deal with them the right way. So that's why I don't like to use actually the word problem itself. Of course. And um, uh, we could have a lot of um, issues that could be related to privacy. So yes, this is what is mostly known today because of the use of social media. So the, uh, you talked about Facebook, Twitter, etc. We are using Zoom today, one of the tools that are most used in this crisis itself. So yeah. also, of course, we're going to have some uh, privacy issues, but it's not the only thing that we need to deal with today. Because actually, according on the solution that you are using, for example, uh, you won't have what we call today the same operational environment. Okay. okay. Uh, an operational environment that will actually allow you to uh, define the right level of risk okay. uh, at some point and what are the impact that you will have. Mm. Uh, an example that I like to use in general when I talk about cyber security or when I talk about the connected object also, uh, you can use actually the same solution or the same product in a specific environment. Okay, let's say for instance you have, a, uh, you have taken a camera for example. Yeah. Okay, you are using this in an uh, industrial environment where you are supervising actually uh, <clears throat> uh, the premises. Okay? okay. So if I tell you what is your most fear uh, yeah. when it comes to this as, a, uh, as today as a business owner, okay? Yeah. Uh, you, you're going to tell me, well, I'm going to fear that this camera won't be functioning anymore because I need it yeah. to supervise actually on a regular basis 24-7. Yeah this premises because yeah. I don't want things to be stolen, etc, etc. Mm. Okay? So you take this exact camera and you put it at your apartment. Okay, so and I ask you the exact same question. What is your fear about this object? Well, this time you won't tell me actually I want it to call 24 seven to be available 24 yeah. seven, but yeah. you will tell me well, actually, when I <laughs> when I, when I go out 
of the toilet. I don't want people. To see yeah, me. when I get out from the shower example, naked, I, like I don't a, want people to see me. Yeah. So exactly. my fear is so that here, my living room becomes the living room of everybody. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, and this is something that is very important when it comes to cybersecurity to give a general risk about a specific object or a specific so solution is wrong because wherever you are using these solutions, you are not going to secure secure them the right way. I uh, see. So it's the context okay. that, uh, that, is doing, uh, that you're dealing with. So maybe in a warehouse, you yes. want the camera to function fully operational, but in your living room, you don't want it to function as, as, as well as it would function for a warehouse or something like this. So that's, so it's important for, exactly. for it's important to use it as a, as a function. I think if we can make an analogy, it's like a weapon. Are you using the weapon for self-defense or are you using it for aggression? And so that's also the, it's the same weapon, it's the same person, but there's different context and this different use for the things. If I, can, if I can challenge you both on something, can you both, maybe we can start with Ayman, name three things that you think will change immediately in our daily day basis. When I say immediately, I'm, lo I'm talking six to 12 to 18 months. I mean, I thought of a couple of things that I can share with you if, if you want. But for example, I think so, our Apple so Watch I, will, have a, will have a temperature. Uh, uh, I, I think the Apple Watch will have something to measure our temperature, our body temperature, because now it's, the, the, it's one of the basic tests that they make for coronavirus. So I think wearables will be able to measure body temperature, for example. Mm. Uh, so you're talking, uh, you are more linking this also according to the crisis. So yeah, yeah, according to what, crisis. What are the changes that are going to... Just yeah, if you can name three yeah, things yeah. that you see that might happen. I'm not saying that they're going to happen. Nobody's going to hold you accountable. But forecast okay. in the future, uh, three things that... Actually, could... I'm going to be more generic here. I'm not going to talk maybe only about the cybersecurity itself. But okay. one of the things that will be completely changed uh, later is uh, actually the behavior toward each other, the way how we're going to say hi to each other. So yeah. the human interaction globally... It's not going to be the same. So okay. this is something that we need to adapt. So that's number one. And that's number one for me. And this is something that will be critical. I'm, I'm doing the link actually for the business because it's going to impact also our way how to do business globally. Absolutely. How to promote things, how to, uh, how to perform our business. Absolutely. Uh, the conferences, uh, the training, the... Market, marketing and sales material strategy it won't be the same actually. Absolutely. It won't be Absolutely. performing all of this the same. So I couldn't is, agree with you more. I'm in the exhibition industry. I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah, so, so, so exactly. So the impact also on everything related to exhibition is going to be very critical and uh, it doesn't mean that it's going to stop. Or no, no, no. It just means that we're going to change how we talk to each other. Exactly. And so this was the second thing for me. The third thing uh, it's the type of solution that we are using today is going to be different, okay? okay. So, uh, today, after this crisis, uh, everyone noticed that cloud solution will be massively used. Okay? okay. Internet of Things will be massively used. Okay. And uh, for those who are thinking about how these Internet of Things are going to be used, it's, it could be really everywhere. We talked about, uh, it's going to be used in healthcare. Yep. Okay. Today, it's something that is going to be going very up okay, yep. in, in terms of uh, development. But mm. the problem is that when you are in crisis, okay, and you implement something for, for your specific environment, uh, the first thing that you think of is, I want this object to be functional yep. and to answer my business goal. Yeah. Okay. This is a bit of uh, how can I say? It? Uh, it's not a problem. It's it's good because you are achieving your goal. But yeah. if you keep using this object uh, for a year or for two years after the crisis itself, and you are not ensuring, for example, the security or the privacy, you might create other problems. Yeah. You will create. You, you will, will create other problems. Sorry. You will create other problems. It's not it's if. Not, it's when. It's not, <laughs> it's exactly. not if. It's so, when. So for me, cloud solution and Internet of Things will be increasing exponentially actually, right. in order to answer business needs. Okay, so I understand. This is the third thing for me. I understand. Roland? Yeah, um, yeah so I think I will, I will 
probably add to the to the, to the solutions type, but basically more in a not in a pr really predictive way. It's it's something that is happening already. Yeah. Uh, a, a lot of investments mm. uh, ha has been uh, dislocated somehow to go to uh, uh, specific developments and innovations uh, that will actually change our lives. Okay, yeah. uh, I would uh, mention one thing that basically, by the way, we are hope hopefully going to work on a project uh, with with a German institute and some other European actually uh, 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 businesses uh, that will. Uh, connect the hospitals mm. to the uh, um, uh, me medicines manufacturing um, uh, process. Ah, to the pharmaceutical uh, uh, provider. Uh, yeah, it could be pharmaceutical providers. Uh, it could be as well. I mean, different manufacturers of component that could be used, like uh, uh, I don't know, uh, like so masks. hospitals to the guy that makes masks, or hospitals to the guy Prison. that makes ventilators, Prison. or hospitals. Yeah, yeah. okay. But, but more, but more like uh, interesting is actually when you uh, the data is actually really customized to the to the problem and to the to the patient's uh, issue. And, and uh, for example, specific cancer rate is requiring I see. A I see. specific blood type that uh, or specific. Uh, um, I see. Uh, I don't know, a uh, molecule that should be produced uh, more more often. Uh, this is actually something that would be connected by through a platform that would be developed uh, and make it uh, available like for uh, many uh, issuers or manufacturers at the same time so mm. they can actually cope with this uh, lack uh, of, um, of need. I okay, see. So one of the things. The second thing I would, I would say, um, we, we, we just talk about, I mean, standards, all the standards are, are also going to change or yeah. maybe to uh, be adopted <laughs> yeah. or enforced. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's basically uh, is also happening uh, right now. We're seeing like uh, a lot of motivation to uh, in, enhance standards in different areas, right? So we're talking uh, standards that will uh, govern our uh, the technology that we use yes. right now mostly uh, or whatever uh, up to the standards that uh, qualify your, uh, your, your the quality of your masks uh, or the, the hygiene Absolutely. The thing you have to do uh, when you go in transportation um, that's one thing and this the lucky lucky thing that we are actually in in, in the field of cyber security is as one of the main area as well, as well that is is going to Changed, or maybe it's going to impact more uh, users, and, and users will be feeling actually the need of it uh, because at some point it's not uh, cybersecurity as well is like a uh, not it's virtual, right? It's like the virus itself. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> it's, it's not something of, tangible that you can touch. Exactly, and right know? now they are seeing it. Somebody tangible. could be listening to us right now. You know, like uh, we don't know that. <laughs> exactly. See, yeah. and so we we seeing it more and more often in the news, which usually uh, were specialized in cyber, for cybersecurity. Now we're seeing it on on whatever CNN. On, I see, uh, I whatever. see, I see. Uh, so it's becoming it's so. So can 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 we agree, all three of us, maybe that cybersecurity that was something that we consider as science fiction at the beginning, with like the Terminator, the machine. Now is becoming more democrat the democratized, where where everybody now is has a sense of awareness basically of the existence of those things and it's not only in the movies anymore basically i'm talking about the normal average joe that goes to work every day that's it's like, it's like, yeah. it's like with, the, with the digitalization as well era right yes that's, that's just follow this this era and cybersecurity is, is becoming uh, one of the uh, needs uh, yeah. the essential needs that we, we need, we need to so let's let's bunch, so let's jump in on another question Roland uh, in that case I, I think that what you're raising is is really is really uh, interesting uh, to the extent of companies realizing that this is something that they will have to deal with now there are companies that are already investing and there are even cities and even government that are already investing the smart city projects those kind of projects that are going on right but there are still more companies that are not doing what they're supposed to do for cybersecurity than companies that are actually doing what they're supposed to do. I think that's, I think that's the reality of what we're doing right now. So for a company that doesn't know anything 
about cybersecurity except what the average Joe knows. Uh, you secure your uh, social media, secure your uh, data, uh, lock your data in some cloud encrypted service. Those are the things that we know. It, for those companies that want to take a step forward into the implementation of things, what, is, what are the cybersecurity for dummies advice that you could give? Where to start? Uh, I, I, it's, it's actually a very, very uh, interesting and, uh, and very broad question, right? So I, I would, I would if, if you allow me, I would focus on, on one part of it. Maybe it will you know, bring, bring value. Uh, because, because we are specialized in, in, in really IoT ecosystem, and that basically something that even uh, increases the, the, the potential, I mean, the, the, uh, the numbers of companies that are not aware of yes, the yes. of those devices, and yes. they are used to get just IT security, and this is something that becoming... You know, so it's not because your data is encrypted on a cloud that you're relatively safe. If your your employees have laptops and they're going with their laptops, so 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 here we are talking about something which we're seeing actually more often in the enterprise ecosystem. Mm. Okay, mm. Uh, it, we called it shadow IoT. It's okay. a funny term, but it's a, a means actually that uh, all those connected devices uh, that. Uh, that actually, you know, from from cameras to your thermostat in the in the, in the company, uh, that are connected also on on in a way on the internet, right? And IP, they have IP I see. address. Uh, uh, they are not registered, right, uh, mm. with the IT uh, department, and that's yeah. basically we call them shadow IoT because they are not registered. They are somehow. Uh, on a different sometimes whether on the same network or on different networks uh, depends so here actually it's a really major risks and and actually we're seeing them everywhere like even in banks uh, which is you know becoming uh, you know, so so can 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 you simplify it for the average it's basically when you have your email or company data on your personal phone for example and it's not registered on the company's uh no, network it's, or it's when you're connecting not through the VPN of the company it's you're connecting on a free Starbucks thing with data in your laptop that is for the company that's what you're talking about yeah I mean it's a bit but it's more like in the enterprise uh, ecosystem right? yes 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 indeed, company, indeed. you go in a company you have their IT uh, mm. the connected, the, your PC are connected to a router to yeah. a server to, and then you will see like uh, when you enter okay in our own, an alarm system that yeah. actually been installed maybe soon. I mean, I don't know when, but it actually is connected on something else and allows you from your mobile application to see actually because you are uh, the owner, for example. Yeah, or the owner. I would like actually to 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 take a look uh, when when uh, in, in the COVID time right now when there's nobody, for instance, and, and therefore I, this actually ends up in a um, uh, outside of the control of the IT department. So it could mm. be. A lot of these devices there. If it, the company is big and and huge, so I'm talking about this as as a Threat. shadow beauty, and yeah. they are becoming more and more. Your smart TV as well. They are buying some smart TVs. They are putting them and they are using them sometimes. I don't know, just to connect or to put up some news or to right. put up some slides. Uh, they are potentially connected so, so let me see let me see if i understand where you're going with this so you're 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 pointing out that we are using devices that are not relatively or not always um uh implemented and connected to the devices of the company right and they're not uh, not uh, don't go through the it department and you you're suggesting you're suggesting and that maybe companies should start centralizing their my, so here is my recommendations. I was just introducing actually the yeah. problem and the, the pain uh, yeah. because I doesn't like the problem. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> the pains uh, that actually those companies have. Uh, it's actually for uh, the, what re recommendation that we can give is, uh, I mean, it could be first to start identifying these. Okay. Mm -hmm. Identify the, these whole IoT devices. Okay. Mm -hmm. and put them, uh, register them. Uh, create awareness for the employees to understand that these things exist and actually they, they have to uh, deal with them in a uh, because sometimes it's a human error right and they have yeah. to you know not change their configuration or play with them uh, and, and, and uh, you know harm their their security protection for instance uh, I would recommend strongly that every company uh, before 
acquiring those things or new things to create what we call security policies for procurement procurement security policies i see uh, that will for example require uh a, 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 to get, get more trusted devices uh, mm. and therefore to audit them to 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 engage a company like us to to help them do that yeah. things like that and finally of course it's like uh, to put up uh, a, a, a crisis plan uh, yeah. to specific like the way to how to react in case actually an attack happened through those devices or I see. through the I see that's basically our recommendation. I see. So I can how can the average person, average employee, the person that is basically has to use his phone, computers, connected devices, conference rooms, conference services, cloud services, how can we be safer? How can we behave safer? Well actually the uh, when we talk about being safer, it's... Um, Let me define safety have... for you. Let me define safety for you. Safer in the Please, sense of... So the uh, safety in the sense of protecting yourself from possible uh, attacks, whether it's related to your data, whether it's related to identity theft, or whether it's related to uh, actual ma mal... Uh, like a actual criminal risk, like somebody... Uh, hacking into your phone, taking your uh, bank account details and then going using them or something like this. Or somebody hacking into your data of your company and then publishing a template of all your contracts and a template of all your, uh, uh, of all your uh, proposals that you make, you know? Or somebody hacking into your conversations and then publishing on Twitter, like, I overheard this and that. So those kind of things. I'm, okay. I'm talking about this kind of safety. Okay. Well, actually, I'm going to have... Mm, a separated answer, split answer into two parts. Take the your first time. part is how to be safer in the company environment. Okay. And I'm gonna more like talk about uh, the experience with also the actual crisis because uh, most of the company, whether they are big or small, uh, most of them already have what we call the crisis management plan. Okay. But what most of them didn't have even big company, okay? Because we are seeing big companies today losing their money because they were not ready. And why that? It's because they haven't actually in their crisis management plan defined uh, what is the actual worst case scenario that could happen. Okay. So, so one of the things to be safer is actually to rethink our actual crisis management plan, no. and to define the real worst case scenario and to learn from our mistake. Okay. Most of the people today, uh, when you talk to a company, they're going to tell you, okay, I was ready for remote working, but I was not ready to that massive remote work. Yes. So even the technology that were put in place in the context ready, of remote work. working, yeah. they were not ready to this massive in a huge use, okay, even banks, even uh, I'm talking about all companies, all sides. So, readapt the crisis management plan. Okay, that's number one. Number two, core red alert cloud, because it's our specialty and we're gonna help you <laughs> to put yeah. things in a secure and safer way. Yeah. Uh, more I, think, seriously, I, I think a lot of companies. I think a lot of companies will call you after this. I mean, it's <laughs> now, now you're scaring the shit out of me. So <laughs> <laughs> the goal is not to scare. Yeah. And as we are talking about the word scaring, I would prefer actually to use the word awareness. Awareness. Now I'm more aware. It's one one of the things also that need to be implemented the right way. Today we have actually some awareness uh, plan when we talk about security. You were talking about the privacy issues, more people are aware actually of the privacy itself, okay? But they, were, they are not aware uh, actually on um, what comes after that, what you can do more. So we should also, uh, according to each crisis actually, adapt our way of uh, teaching people mm -hmm. uh, the security, okay? So mm -hmm. today, if I do want to do an awareness about security, I will concentrate the effort on healthcare. Yeah. Okay. Because today we clearly saw that most of healthcare environment are attacked during the crisis, and this will continue to, mm. to be done. Mm. We saw that, for example, 
all uh, all the uh, solutions that are used for remote working, such as Zoom, such as uh, any other solution that will allow you to for video conferences, yeah. they are aimed during yep. the crisis. Yep. And as this mode of working will continue, it will continue to be done that way. Third point of type of solution from a political point of view, we started putting some mobile applications, okay. some cloud solutions, yeah. some objects that are used to track, to, to actually to answer a direct business need uh, mm -hmm. related to the crisis itself. And these things are gonna be used later. So we built these applications today during the crisis to be safer later, we need to implement the right security in front of these applications. We okay. could not keep them this way. We yes. answered the business need today, but we mm. haven't answered regulation okay. related to security, compliance, uh, legal uh, regulation, all this. I'm not talking only about security, but it means that now that we have implemented the prototype that worked, we need to secure them during the crisis and after the crisis. So this is how we can be safer. Uh, and in order to do that, it means that business needs to put more budget on security, more budget on safety, and they should stop thinking about, uh, well, I will think about this later because I have- And it will happen, it, it happens to the others and no, 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 yeah. I'm safe, I have a, yeah. yeah not only that, this uh. is something that is completely true, what you're mm -hmm. saying, but there's worse, actually, when they build in general, most of them will say, okay, I have the time to market. I need to finish. If I introduce security or legal or compliance, I won't achieve my goal. Yes, there yes. time to market. Well, actually, this is wrong because yeah. time to market will kill you. Okay, today, maybe you have like, I don't know, one month of delay. Because but, you if you, but, if you, uh, but if you market an unsafe product or if you market an unsafe solution, it might kill you on the long run. So that's... Uh, exactly. So... <laughs> Time to market, you can uh, maybe delay it of one month, but to keep the long run, as yeah. you're saying. So yeah. this is very important also. And um, on the on the social on the social side, you touched a little bit on the business. On the social side, people like you, me, what what can I tell my employees on a personal level? What can I tell my sister on a personal level? How to? What are the things that you give advice to people around you around? Cybersecurity, because for example, I'll give I'll give you a short example. Yeah. I think it's I think it's in France um, uh, where uh, now doctors are basically incentivized by the government to report uh, COVID nineteen uh, cases for the government to be able to track or something. So that poses a big issue uh, in the in the in the profession where it's like secrecy or not secret. Is it secret or not secret? So what are the behaviors that you would advise somebody? If I go to my doctor, should I or or for example, if I if I sign in on a service online, should I accept the general terms and conditions or should I look into something that is, what is the best, what are the best well, practices in this sense, in your opinion? The best practice is to follow your heart. This is one. <laughs> and yeah. uh, because you are the owner of your own data. Okay. okay. Whether, no matter what, uh, uh, an information that is related to you, you own it. Yeah. Okay. And that's why you have also a regula a regulation today that okay. protect personal data. Okay. okay? And so for example, I can write, so if I write to Facebook today, for example, that I would like to close my account and I would like all my data to be erased because I don't want my kids someday to, to dig up information about me. Is that something that they will do? Uh, by law, by law, that's what you're then, saying. They might not yes, do it, but actually, by law. Actually, what the, what what you also also should know that you have a law in Europe, law in US, and when it comes to mixed platform, yeah, no. So so uh, yes, they're gonna give you your data because they say that they do it. Yeah. Okay, but it's actually a mix between security, privacy, and legal. Yep. Okay. And when it comes, so yes, they're gonna give it to you, but in the US, for example, when it comes to Terrorist, mm, terrorism, for example, yeah. if, uh, the, um, if, uh, if internally on a national level, they ask Facebook to give the, the data, yeah, the, the, the the data European of European citizen, I see. Of, of a European citizen, also they need to do it. Okay. Yeah. But sometimes 
big companies fight this I internal see. national law also and they I don't, try also to I don't know if it's safe what I told my uh, what I told my friends the other day is I don't post on social media something that I don't want my kids to dig up in 20 or 30 years that's it that's, but, that, that's my general be, behavior you know if I'm comfortable posting myself uh, naked on the beach with a beer and I'm okay with my kids seeing their father naked on a beach with a beer I'll post it I don't uh, it's not it's not a uh, yeah, privacy here you're talking about a specific concern about your kid some other people will have other concern about about their jobs or something i'm, I'm talking yeah. about so, in general in general uh what are the best practices in your opinion should i be scared and close all my uh, social media accounts actually, uh, it, uh, again when, when you talk about security okay security is related directly to the business needs so yeah when when you tell me should i be careful well, actually, what is your business need mm. for this specific case? Mm. You you don't want to expose your body. Is this actually no, no, no? The need? business the business need is basic. <laughs> okay. Let okay. Let's let's put it another I'm, I'm way. I'm going the link so so I can tell you how global best practice. Could, uh, okay, so the global let's it. let's put the global best practice on. Uh, for example, I don't want to. I I I do not want uh, uh, my data to be. Uh, um, uh, monetized for a bad cause let's put it this way let's put let's say I share and I blog and I write uh, how can I tell my 16 year old how can I tell my 18 year old how can I tell my salesperson in a company that even though you're confined even though you're on lockdown the data you share might harm your business might harm you might harm your family uh, posting I mean some people are getting employee employment checks from the government but they are <laughs> posting themselves having having fun with it and drinking beers and doing barbecues i mean that's what now you're supposed to do when you're living on an unemployment right like what you're supposed to be doing is something else so how do you behave better that's my answer i will i will give you some bullet points about this part and i feel like roland also want to yeah yeah we'll, so we'll, have have roland, we'll have roland we'll have roland so the first the first thing which is mandatory you should always separate your personal life from working life. This okay. is very important. Okay. Always have separated accounts. I'm talking about a very basic uh, awareness uh, about real life day to day. So okay. you don't use your Facebook to post work uh, or okay. things, uh, related to work. And of course, then you have personality. Of course, if you are uh, out for a sickness, uh, you won't post uh, a beer. Yeah. <laughs> a picture yeah, yeah. with a beer in your hand. This is something actually, um, for me, you don't need awareness. It's actually personality. It's common People sense. Do it. They are, yes, it's actually common sense. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But separating work environment from personal environment is very important. And then whether you are actually talking about personal or working environment, you should know that everything you post online, okay, it's seen by everyone. If it's not seen by everyone because you haven't made it public, potentially your solution provider, when I talk about solution provider, I'm gonna say it in a simple way, yeah. Facebook, LinkedIn, yeah. Twitter. So it's Instagram, not because your picture on Facebook everything. is private to you that nobody sees it, that's what you're saying. Exactly. It's not nobody sees it. I no. will go yeah. until. Uh, uh, no, we should be more specific because it's, if not, it's a bit tricky. So the thing is, it could be accessed by someone else, but it's not exposed in a mandatory way. But it could be exposed because okay. actually, it's not because the interface, what people see, is not exposed. Okay. And because you put the private option that your data are secure or mm. are not exposed on another tunnel that you can see yeah okay That's so good. before putting anything online you should evaluate your own risk and okay. your own business need what do you accept what is the worst case scenario if this picture that i'm posting on facebook that's it goes so look into your so the best so the best practice that kills everything is go with what you are comfortable sharing with people so if you are comfortable if you're talking sharing, about social media exactly yeah i'm talking about i'm talking about uh, social media and even even i'm talking about uh, for example when you go to a, when you log in for example in a in an app and you're using your email account or when you're uh, using uh, something like this it's it's also i have for example an email account that i use for my all login apps i don't receive any emails on it it's just for the logins 
This way, I don't, I don't have to even look at my emails in this account. I receive, I, I, I bet, I receive a bunch of spam, a bunch of, uh, uh, mm -hmm. of offers, and come eat at our restaurant and those kind of things. But I can kill it the way the, the day I want to kill it, and it doesn't have anything to do with my other accounts, right? So that's, uh, mm -hmm. that's the, that's the thing. Roland, yeah. what can you touch about this? The, 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 because now, now we're talking about being safer in something, and I think we can start putting some scenarios that we see in the movies. Do you think the machines will attack us? Do you think, uh, like if you, if you take, I, I heard somebody say once in a, in a pitching idea, he said, if you want to forecast the next $50 billion startups, look at the last 50 movies from the 80s until right now. Whether it's AI, I mean, AI, holograms, whatever it is, Star Wars started all of this, right? Like, <laughs> you know, so, so if you, what, what can you say on this? Uh, ju just before that, I wanted just to add, I mean, to the excellent recommendations that Ayman gave. And finally, actually, uh, by the end, Ayman mentioned the term risk. Yeah. And actually, exactly that, that word, if actually you or any you, uh, individual will be able to uh, understand what is the risk. And that actually could happen in a different formula, very simple. Okay. Uh, uh, he will be able to judge upon uh, what, what what to accept and what to not accept. Okay, to okay. do okay. and their actions. So it's very important. So you just mentioned it, the image. Uh, you qualify it already. Is it sensitive to me? Then perfect. Even though you don't know the threats or whatever, to be able mm. to calculate the risk exactly, you know from from that that actually it is a lot of sensitivity that gets into information. When you are, for example, at risk, and uh, when you drive your car, you put the seat belt right, not because actually somebody would uh, you know asks you to do that because no. you know actually you know you know there's a risk accident that you do it, and that's how it happens when you will be aware of that risk. Uh, you will actually uh, put up the right, uh, you know. Okay. It, it, it's it's really it's really a very uh, very. Uh, um, uh, I mean, it, it's become it goes from uh, the uh, uh, from the virtual reality to the reality, yeah. right? And actually, this is how we. Sp uh, there there are a lot of uh, stages that we go through these from from being virtual from having an idea which is already just there virtual to make it reality it takes time it takes uh, uh, processes uh, uh, investments uh, uh, it takes determination yeah uh, and 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 uh, i think that's actually from my uh, point of view uh, every uh, idea uh, is coming from uh, uh, from a, a certain uh, need a certain uh, uh, answering a certain uh, way to a vision okay. uh, and, and basically if you and as much as that uh, idea becomes clearer uh, even though actually it is still virtual today okay. it, chances that will get real in the future is big okay? yeah so okay you can actually translate it to everything. I, I think it's Jules Verne. I think it's Jules Verne who said this, a uh, French uh, philosopher, writer, inventor. He said, anything you can imagine, you can make happen, basically. Anything your brain can make, it's just a question of time. It, you might not do it yourself because the tools and technology are not doing it right now. But if you can imagine it, it means somebody else in the future can imagine it and maybe they can make it happen. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And basically, that's where, where our also very, I mean, we are in, in Red Alert Labs, and Ayman actually could, could tell a bit more about it. It's like uh, we are in, in the middle of the innovation, and we call innovation, uh, I mean, we are already uh, we call Jeune Entreprise Innovante. Yeah. And, and, and those uh, uh, products and, and, and uh, R&D that we are investing in today are going toward innovation about ideas. Uh, IoT is something that uh, a few years ago was you know, very, very uh, yeah. not realistic because of different uh, uh, problems uh, maybe driven by technology. Now it is real uh, and the business are benefiting from it. Uh, we at Red Labs actually also have this vision and we are mm. actually counting on many nice movies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, the right infrastructure. In our heads to, you know, yeah. 
I think we can wrap up. Any any final recommendation, words, any things you want to put up? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, if if, uh, if I can start, uh, I, I I I think our audiences, everybody, actually should be aware that there's no uh, the zero risk. There's doesn't exist in any in anything like uh, financial risks, healthcare risks, <laughs> all the all all the other types of risks. In cybersecurity, zero risk does not exist, uh, and it's all about trust and yeah. actually it, it comes back to our really mission it's all about trust and trust actually to be able to gain or increase that trust you have several means uh, let's mention three means very important and take them uh, really very very carefully with you uh, uh, the technical means okay yep. that you're able to uh, measure your security uh, yep. Technically, uh, that's that's very important. Um, transparency. Mm. <laughs> it's all about transparency, right? Yeah. It's actually you don't know Facebook how actually they are dealing with your data. You will never actually trust them, right? Yeah. yeah. So one of the things, and then you have of course the legal governments, the legal uh, frameworks, uh, which basically enforce. Uh, some specific rules allowing to yeah. uh, provide additional trust by involving, you know, certification authorities, third parties, uh, and I that's, that's what, is, uh, what is what. I see. Ayman? Well, actually, I'm going to be a little bit uh, shorter than that, but it's going to be uh, approximately the same thing that I'm going to say in a different way. Um, I just want to tell people, don't take rules as a punishment because yeah. uh, these rules are actually based on a risk analysis by experts mm. according to no matter for, for whatever subject you pick uh, Ronan was talking about financially or legally or mm. compliance when you have rules it means that these rules were defined according to a very comprehensive risk analysis that will help people to to survive, to live, to protect their rights, to protect their privacy, to protect their security. So they should never take it as a punishment. They should, okay, evaluate it, understand it, and yep. ask question about it, yep. but not take it as a punishment. Yeah. Because this punishment itself is something that will help you to survive in a specific way, according to yeah. a specific book. Yeah. And I think that according to the movie thing, um, we are very far already. We have implemented today a lot of solutions, a lot of technology. We also, if you think about Elon Musk, for example, he also created actually a company that already implants a chip in brain in the goal of fighting some uh, sickness mm. originally. But of course, all technology that you have you can take them and you can do bad things with them. Yep, absolutely. Something that applies on everything. Absolutely. So you need to evaluate this at each time that you use a solution uh, or you are creating a solution because innovation is good, but it could be used in a bad way. Good. Guys, thank you for being with us. Thank you. For, for all those watch, for all people watching, I'm going to include all the links that are, uh, that can connect you to those two brilliant people. And I hope everybody is embracing the, the power of the IoT. And as we said, there is gonna be a balance of power that's gonna do great things and there's gonna be a counterbalance that's gonna try to hack and find another way of doing things. But basically like with any human invention, you know, that's, that's why we have the Nobel Prize, by the way, because he invented something that was made for use and it ended up destroying and so they invented the Nobel Prize to counter that and to uh, and to uh, and to embrace the invention uh, inventions that are better for humanity thanks both of you thank you thanks a lot Pete Thank you for watching this video. I hope it brought you some value. If you would like to engage, please leave a comment in the comment section. You can also click the subscribe button and activate notification to receive the updates on this channel.